Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video today. We're going to walk through building my Sprinter's kitchen cabinet. I picked up a Westphalia kitchenette for 200 Canadian dollars. After spending hours looking at it trying to figure out how I could save it, I decided to scrap 80% of it and just reuse the cooktop. I started with a plywood frame with a slot to hold the cooktop, similar to how it was fastened originally. I also had to bump the cabinet out to accommodate my water tank and sliding cooler. The Westphalia face trim received a much needed sand and coat of paint which instantly brought it back to life. I had my cabinet on roller casters, which made staining all angles an easier process. I didn't film plumbing the stove, but it involved running a new line from the existing copper line to a one pound propane bottle, which I still haven't had to change out. I made my cabinet front and drawer faces from the same pieces of plywood, which kept all the grains matching. I mounted drawer faces inset to accommodate my push button latches, which I don't believe will work if you overlay the drawer faces. When making circular cuts, the plywood really wants to split and chip, so prior to cutting, I run a knife blade through my pencil line to break the grain and stop any splitting from happening. I routed out my bed slats and made a compartment for them on the side of the kitchen. Any finishing you do from sanding, staining, brushing, you want to do with the grain. Any deviation from that plan, and it will go noticed. I went over the whole cabinet again with a second coat of stain and was really happy with the color it ended up. I had a high school woodworking teacher tell me, however long you spend building a project, you should spend twice that time finishing it. After spraying around six thin coats of satin varnish, I brought out the hardware to install the drawers. I tried to spray every nook and cranny that I could to seal up all the plywood. A good coat of everything is like wrapping your project in a layer of plastic, which will make it look better for longer. This is a retrofitted, updated Westphalia faucet from Go Westy. I really like its built-in 12-volt dial with adjustable water pressure. This was probably one of the heavier things I've lifted in my time. I'm currently working off-grid by myself, so you've got to make it happen one way or another. I was really happy to finally get the new kitchen in the van. I spent four full days building and I really wanted to see some progress. And here is the final product, 100% complete. The cooler is a 45 liter, 12 volt Amazon unit that I'm super impressed with. I have 200 watts of solar that keeps it ice cold all day. The gas truck really makes this lid feel like factory and also keeps it up when I'm parked on a hill. I've got a 15 gallon water tank and a drain out the bottom of the van. If I'm ever camping somewhere that's not suitable for the redneck drain, I throw a Tupperware tote underneath it. I'm pretty rarely putting anything more than soapy water down the sink. Building the kitchen comes with lots of frustrations, but stick with it, and when you're eating like a king with no cell phone service, you'll thank yourself. For me, the plumbing brought the most challenges, but I really liked that I ran everything through the floor and outside. In case anything fails, it's just going to leak onto the ground and not flood my van. I didn't want to cut any holes in my van, so I mounted a water fill right above my bed slats here. I have a hose with a shutoff attachment, so I can turn it off before it overflows. I was pretty stumped trying to find a way to sit while cooking. While building the van I had a stool that I'd always use, but I knew that look would soon come to an end. When I realized I could use the fridge to sit on, it really felt like a problem solved. Thank you very much for watching. I actually have another low roof T1N that I'm about to start building, so stay tuned for more videos on that. And as always, happy building.